Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. Actually, Mead TV is going on hiatus for the holiday weekend, so instead we bring you a quick look back at the first quarter of 2012. But first, a couple of quick reminders. The Fort Meade chapter of the Military Order of World Wars is inviting color guards from around the area to participate in the Fort Meade Memorial Day Remembrance Ceremony on May 6th. Interested units need to RSVP by April 23rd. You can contact the Public Affairs Office for more information. Meanwhile, as you probably know, the golf course is set to close on May 1st, but the last tournament, the 2012 Commander's Cup, will take place on April 29th. For details and entry information, just go to www.ftmeadmwr.com. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a great holiday weekend and a great Mead week. Finished out at $521,000, which I think is pretty outstanding for, uh, for the base. You might think with all the influx of newcomers to Fort Meade, the leap in contributions might have been expected. The only uh, big uh, organization that we added uh, was uh, DMA. Um, and they did $39,000. So it was really kind of the, the uh, legacy units that we had who stepped up and put more emphasis and, and grew the numbers. What people in the military don't know, there would not be a civil rights movement if it wasn't for the integration of the United States military. Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl and why? Oh, I don't want either one to win because they're not my team. Dallas is my team, but um, New England, I think, is going to win. They're going to take it um, because Tom Brady is just, he's just awesome. Giants are going to win because New York. I'm definitely in labor now. You know, we got to pack our bags and we got to get ready to go. At this point, I'm still thinking we've got an hour, you know, we'll go to the hospital, everything will be fine, you know, and... Uh, so my husband started getting things together, started making phone calls. He ran next door to get Dory. When he asked me um, if I was okay catching, my immediate response was yes. Yeah, no problem. She arrived just after my water broke, and um, about two contractions later, I was pushing. I was still hoping that she would get to the hospital. Like, until I saw the baby's head out, I was like, oh, this is really happening. Everybody was just kind of stunned, but, you know, everybody rose to the occasion, and um, Dory caught the baby, and everything was fine. She just was so calm, and just, she was like, okay, just make sure that, you know, you've got her, and the only thing I knew to do was to make sure that the cord wasn't wrapped around the neck. Who knows what the outcome would have been had there not been somebody who could have provided the support, care, and, and advice to, to help it get to where we did get there. The paramedics were kind of surprised and maybe a little put out that they got there after everything had happened, but you know, everything good. She was sitting there with the, with the newborn in her arms, um, ready to go to the hospital and, and take care of the, the rest of it and, and move on. I would just say thank you so much for being there. <laughs> I mean, definitely a trial by fire. So we just really appreciate the fact that Dory was able to be there for us and help me out, you know, while Aaron was on the phone with everybody. So, thanks. The Colonel briefly highlighted what the garrison is doing since the announcement of a May 1st closure date for the courses. Colonel Rostein addressed the golf course issue in detail in this week's edition of our award-winning newspaper, The Sound Off. Other issues included lots of concerns about speeding. Residents, particularly those in post-housing, should see more road barriers installed. In more positive news, the Colonel announced a new timeline for the new AFI shop at gas station and drive through Burger King. We're still busy digesting all the information from yesterday's Facebook town hall. We'll have more on next week's edition. Also on hand, Colonel Greg Gadson, currently director of the U.S. Army Warrior Program and recently named Fort Belvoir's next garrison commander. We all are familiar with that term, uh, finding your new normal, and that's what this is about. It's about finding your new normal, finding your path to independence, and living your life to the fullest of your ability, and that's, that's what this is about. Whether you get a metal pull around your neck or, or whether you don't, it's living up to all you can be. And that's the spirit that made you become a soldier, and that's the spirit that really will always make you a soldier, is living up and knowing that people uh, are dependent on you and you can be counted on. Incident Commander Anne Arundel County's Major Tom Wilson received a special commander's award for his leadership. We put together a, a planning group that probably had about uh, 12 or 13 of our commanders 
and uh, uh, we sat down with your folks. We, we based it on intelligence. We based it on information that we had, and we created an instant action plan for the, uh, for the day of this event.